Hello, this is Ms. DB, and in this lesson we're going to talk about angles of elevation and depression. This is from Chapter 8, Section 4, and our objective is to solve problems involving angles of elevation and angles of depression. These are some um, great word problems that you will get setting up these, these kind of problems. So our vocab is angle of elevation and angle of depression. We'll start with angle of elevation. It is the angle formed by a horizontal line straight across, right to left, and a line of sight to a point above the line. So this guy in the air traffic controller booth is looking, and he, this is a horizontal line from, I guess, his face, and he is looking up at the airplane. Angle 1 is the angle of elevation. So it's from T to P. It's when he's looking up. That's the angle of elevation from the horizontal line. An angle of depression, that would be the pilot's line of sight. So he is, there's the horizontal line formed, and he is looking at the traffic controller. He's looking down below him, and that is the angle of depression from the plane to the tower. Um, now, actually, horizontal lines are all parallel to each other, so angle 1 is actually equal to angle 2, because we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, and that means alternate interior angles are congruent, so therefore angle 1 is going to be equal to angle 2. So the angle of elevation from one point is congruent to the angle of depression from the other point. All right, let's just classify whether these are angle of elevation or angle of depression. Okay, here's angle of, of angle 1, I mean. Here's the horizontal line, and this is going down this way. So picture somebody standing at the top of the tree. I don't know why they're standing up there, but that would be an angle of depression. Angle 2, or angle 4, I guess we're doing angle 4 next, that is the angle that is formed by the horizontal line and a line of sight from this guy above it. So that's an angle of elevation. All right, let's look at angle 5 up here. Here's angle 5. It's formed by a horizontal line right here and a line of sight below that line. I guess that's the top of the tree there. That's an angle of depression. Angle 6, on the other hand, is going from this horizontal line here and then to a point above it, so that's an angle of elevation. Let me go back to that. Also, angle 3 that would be this angle here. That would be an angle of, do you know what it would be? It's a line of sight from this horizontal line going down. So this would be an angle of depression. And angle 4 would be an angle of elevation because it's going from a horizontal line up to the plane. So a point above it would be an angle of elevation. All right, now let's look at solving problems. This is the fun part. Using angle of elevation or angle of depression, depending on what the story is. All right, so we've got a Seattle, Seattle Space Needle, and that's represented by this tall line here. It casts a 67-meter shadow. That's along the bottom. If the angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow, um, I guess that's point A, to the top of the Space Needle, B, is 70 degrees, how tall is the Space Needle? Round to the nearest meter. All right, so we've got a right triangle formed by this angle of elevation. We know that uh, this side is 67 degrees. We could find angle B if we needed to. How are we going to find Y? Well, it's a right triangle, but we can't use Pythagorean theorem because we only know one side. What you've learned this chapter is that you can use trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, in order to find missing sides. We've already got our sketch. All right, so we are given the angle 70 degrees, and we're given the side adjacent to it. That's the touching side. And we're looking for the side opposite. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so tangent's going to work really well. So we're going to write tangent of 70 equals opposite y over 67. Now, the next thing you're going to do, you're not going to find tangent of 70 on your calculator. The next thing you're going to do is multiply both sides by 67. So you're going to now know that if you multiply both sides by 67, you end up with 67 times tangent of 70. Now you get your calculator out. 
And now you type in tangent of 70, make sure it's in degrees, and then multiply by 67, and you get your answer that y is equal to about 184 meters. All right, let's look at another problem. Let's suppose that there's a plane at an altitude of 3,500 feet, and the angle of elevation from the airport to the plane is 29 degrees. What is the horizontal distance between the plane and the airport? Now we definitely, if you have a problem that does not have a picture, you're going to want to draw a picture. All right, so let's see what we've got going on here. We know that here's our plane up here at P, and A is the airport. We know that the angle of elevation is 29 degrees, and we know that the plane is 300 or 3,500 feet up. And we're looking for this distance here. Now you have to pick the right tangent, sine, or cosine function. You pick the right one that will use what we know and what we're trying to find out. In this example, again, we're going to want to do tangent because the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. We know the opposite. We're looking for the adjacent. However, this is the kind where you have another extra step in here because what you need to do is multiply both sides by x before you can go any farther. So then we would have x times the tangent of 29 is equal to, sorry, my pen thing isn't working good today, is equal to 3,500. And then your next step would be to divide both sides by the tangent of 29. So you don't actually type this into your calculator at this point. You just go ahead and leave it as tangent 29, just write that over, and then you get your calculator out and take 3,500 divided by tangent of 29. Simplify that on your calculator, and you get that x is approximately 6,314. They told us to round to the nearest foot, so that's what we did. All right, so here's another problem. We have an ice climber, and he's standing at the edge of a crevasse that is 115 feet wide. The angle of depression from the edge where she stands to the bottom of the opposite side is 52 degrees. So this time we're going to be using an angle of depression. How deep is the crevasse at this point? Round to the nearest foot. A crevasse is basically a like a cliff or a crack. So we need a picture. Now the 52 degrees is an angle of depression, but the good thing is that we know that an angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation. So that means that this is also 52 degrees, and that can be used to finish up our right triangle. So we've got 115 degrees is the, the, how wide this crack is. And we want to find how tall is it, because that would be important information, if this is 52 degrees here. And she would know, you know, if she can go down or not go down or whatever. So there's our picture. Let me put the 52 in here again. So by alternate interior angles we know that that's 52 degrees and now we have to decide would I use tangent, cosine, or sine in order to find when I'm looking for the opposite side and I know the adjacent. I think it's just coincidence that tangent keeps working out but maybe a lot of these problems you're going to use tangent. Um, tangent of 52 is equal to y over 115. Multiply both sides by 115. And then simplify on your calculators. So we get that that crevice, crevasse, crevice, crack, is about 147 feet tall. Okay, here's another example using an angle of depression. We've got a um, fire over here. And there's a man on the fire tower who's looking for fires. And he sees one, and he knows that it's 3 degrees for the angle of depression. You can measure that with the tools. And by alternate interior angles, that means that this <coughs> right triangle that's formed is also going to be a 3 degree angle. All right, and we also know that he knows, of course, that his fire tower is 90 feet tall. He needs to know how far is it to the fire. So he can do that using this um, angle of, de of depression. It's once again going to be tangent. This time, though, it's 90 over x. And then you multiply both sides by x, and then divide by the tangent of 3, and then just simplify in your calculator. 
So it's approximately 1,717 feet to the fire. So this would have, you know, very good applications. Somebody would be able to use this in order to find out information that would be helpful. In this problem, we have a lighthouse that is 69 feet above the water. Here's our lighthouse over here. That's my lighthouse. And um, he sees two boats in the water directly in front of him. The angle of depression to the nearest boat is 48 degrees. The angle of depression to the other boat is 22. What is the distance between the two boats? So we're really looking at what is the distance from A to B. So L is the observer in the lighthouse. A and B are the two boats. Oh, they already marked with an alternate interior angles where these angles would be. Because the first one is 22 would go over here and 48 would go down here. And X is the distance between the two boats. So we can find Y using this triangle here and using tangent again. And we do that on the calculator. 69 divided by tangent of 48 is equal to 62.1. Now we can find Z. Now, no, we aren't going to find X right away. We're going to find Z because we have this triangle, this long triangle here. So we are going to use the 22 degree angle. Ignore this stuff now. And we are going to write the tangent of 22 is equal to 69 over Z. And then we solve that by multiplying by z and then dividing by tangent of 22, and we get 170.8 feet. Now remember, that's x. I mean, that was y. So now we need to take the 178 that we just found, 170.8, minus the 62.1 that we found for y, subtract to get 109 feet. So this is one of the more complicated problems that you could do using two times we, we use the angle of depression. And that's about it. The problems on your worksheet, um, there's more problems than what you have to do. I, I, there's some beginning stuff practicing just naming angle of depression, angle of elevation, and then you have to pick so many problems to do, and I think then there's one or two more after that that are required. So make sure you read the directions. You don't have to do all of them unless you um, want to for extra credit. All right, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.